I'm so glad that you are with us today Thank on this Facebook Live to talk about mental health Absolutely. and what your church is doing. Yeah. And we're here at the Purpose Driven Church Conference. Yay. 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 How many zillion times have you been oh, here? What is this, number four? Is I that think, all? I, I swear you guys have been here for the last 30 years. It feels like it. Yeah. It feels like but it. The, yeah. Needless to say, you and your church mm -hmm. are so, you and your hubby and your church yes. are here all the time, you guys. Your all worship team led this morning, yes, and that was amazing. Thank I loved it. You, bless you. Place practically fell down afterwards. It oh. was just, um, uh, it was on fire. We had so, so much great. fun. So, so much fun. tell those that are, um, tell our viewers um, yeah. just about yourself. Okay. Um, give us the full rundown. You know, okay. don't leave anything out. Okay. Start at two, you know, tell, <laughs> tell us everything. Um, well, we all know my name is Monique. Yes. Um, born and raised in San Diego. Um, I've traveled a little bit um, with life, we'll yeah. say that, um, but it's brought me back to San Diego. Um, I am married to the Terry Wayne Brooks. The. The Terry Wayne Brooks. There is Brooks. only one. Yes, there is only one. <laughs> he is pastor of, San Di of uh, Baby Church of San Diego. Um, we have two amazing young men. We have a 20-year-old. His name is Jordan. He's in school in Mexico, um, entering his third year. We're super you proud of him. You were telling me about that. Yes. I, I mean, that, that, that story is amazing. It I is. didn't even know. Just What's the name of the university? The University of Puebla, in, of, of the Americas in Puebla. Yes, yes. Who knew? And he's playing football. And he's playing American football. Yeah, and I had to say, so do you mean football as in soccer, soccer what the rest right. of the world means? Right. Or do you mean, and you said American, American football. American football. It I is huge. It. The fans are, they're fanatics for sure. That so we're, we're super proud of him and, and just amazed at what God is doing with him in Mexico. And then our youngest is 14. He's going into high school in the fall, and um, he's outgrowing everybody in the house <laughs> and eating us out of house and uh, home. They and do so, that. Yes, they, they do. do so football family, so he's into football as well. And academics, of course, comes yeah. first after God, but but we're, we're lucky that God blessed us with those two yeah. young men. Yeah. Well, so tell us just a little bit about, you know, where you, I know you have some degrees. Yes. You are an yes. highly educated woman. Yeah, thank what you is so much. Um, well, I have my bachelor's in interdisciplinary studies, pre-K through eighth grade. I thought education was going to be my career goal and it was for several years and then um, God just kind of switched it on me and so then I went to pursue my master's in leadership ministry at Faith Seminary with a concentration in Christian counseling and so that's that's my shape I'm, I'm in my shape yes. now you yes. know and so I am um, in ministry full-time with counseling and the mental health ministry as well we'll get to that yeah, but um, so that's where that's where God has brought me. That's where He yeah, has you right that, now. That's where he has so me. in these years that um, you know, I've had the opportunity to get to know you yeah. and um, and Terry and, and watch your church. I mean, just I don't know. I, I love it every time I see you guys because you're always doing something that is powerful and groundbreaking. Yeah. And we talked a few years ago um, about you know mental health ministry, and I remember us just talking about of all the ministries you could start mm -hmm. at your church. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many, mm -hmm. so many needs in a thousand different areas, yeah. but yet you guys decided to start a mental health ministry. Absolutely. Yeah, tell us why. Yeah. Why did you decide that one yeah. out of you know, so many that yeah. you could be doing? And I think it came from me uh, counseling counselees within our church and realizing that there was a, a, a deeper concern above you know from the just surface concern that they originally came to me with and so God was like well you need to get a little bit more educated on what those concerns are and so that's where the mental health um, came from and so I was like well I I have no idea what I'm getting myself into yeah. and so trainings and conferences and um, reaching out to people such as yourself who um, are advocates for mental health and um, he, he's just put people in my place who are in it, who are doing it, who have a heart for it. And he's growing me to have a compassionate heart to be able to service people. Um, and those who are dealing with mental health issues and those who, their families as well. Sure. And so um, I took the concern to my pastor husband and um, he was like, well. Little pillow talk. Yeah, yeah. The exactly. And he's the one where you take him an idea and he's like, so what are you going to do with it? <laughs> You know, and yeah. he, he, he's he's that type of person where he, he's trusting enough right. to say that I believe God put that on your heart and I, I, I believe in you um, to fulfill.
feel it. So what's going to happen? And so, so came, what did you do? Came up to the conference. Okay. It was it was overwhelming in a great way. You're talking about our the one of the, the mental health yes, conferences. Yes, the mental health conference at, at the ranch. Yeah. I think it was in April. Was it? Um, um, no, it was, was it the pastor training? No, no it was the very um, first one. The very first one that was in in. Um, October, October of 2015. There you go. Yeah. And so um, took away so many nuggets, so much information. And I'm like, okay, God, so now what do I do? And I had a different project on my heart at the time. And as I'm going through these different sessions, God is like, okay, put that to the side. You need to work on this. And so I was like, okay, okay. Scared out of my mind because yeah. it's never been done before at Bayview. Right. Had no clue in the direction that I was going to take it or that God was going to take it. And so fully stepped out on faith and um, put together a skeleton type of you know plan, presented it to um, to Terry. And he said, well, if, if this is if this is going to work, it has to be led from the pulpit. And so then the first of the year, he did a sermon series mm -hmm. on mental health. Wow. On mental health. Wow. Um, and before that, going back a little bit, God gave me the name of the ministry. Okay. I didn't have anything else, yeah. but I had that. <laughs> and so, yeah, it counts for exactly right. And so then he um, centered his sermon series around that the, the title of the ministry, which is RE3. And what mm -hmm. that stands for, it's Revealing Christ relieving suffering and restoring lives and so that was his sermon series title and the first sermon uh, for that series uh, at the beginning of the year was a new mind for a new year and it was amazing absolutely amazing to hear the responses and the feedback um, we had no idea what yeah. if or when sure. we would get any feedback you know from any of our members and almost halfway through the series he was done he was so done because it was, it's a, it's an area that he hasn't tapped into, and we talk a lot about you know a lot of times about our ministers not being you know educated in that area, yes. Yes. and that proves it right there. Yes. And so he just was like, this is heavy, you know. And I said, Man, you got to keep going, <laughs> and let me tell you why. So and so said this to me about your sermon. So and so said this to me, and so he open the door yeah, it was you know needs. absolutely yeah. you know for the conversation to start talking you know for us to start talking about mental illness and people are sharing that whole whisper in my ear yes. thing I, I have this I'm dealing with this and so I'm like oh my gosh it's it's here it's real did a needs assessment survey blew me away blew me away what did, what did you find what was surprising to you the the high level of those who were having suicidal thoughts okay. And it was totally confidential, so I don't know who submitted a survey, but the fact that there were a lot of ones, and ones was the high, okay. the highest number, okay. um, one to four, and uh, a lot of ones, a lot of twos, and I'm like, okay, we got to get, we got to do something. Was this still during that sermon series, or was it yes, after? Yes, okay. it was during the sermon series, and so we were kind of just dropping things here and there, just to kind of see how, you know, it was going to be received, and. Um, we, 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 so the, the uh, needs assessment survey got the results back from that and, and then people saying, well, um, so I'm so-and-so who is, who has a daughter who's dealing with this and I can help with this. And so even in, wow. with the needs assessment survey, people were offering their time, you know, based off of their experience. And, um, so from that point, I'm, I'm slowly but surely kind of structuring what the ministry will look like yeah. um, trying to get resources well what are we going to use sure. you know what curriculums are we going to use what, what are we going to start with and so uh, it sounds like you guys did sort of the thing that we do here at Saddleback often which is build the plane in the air yes and that is such a beautiful thing yeah. sometimes yes. and it just drives me nuts at the same time Absolutely. because you know, Rick is always talking about not waiting till things are perfectly yeah. laid out before you actually, you know, if you seize that moment, right. you catch the wave as he talks right. about, and right. you, you start moving on an area you see a need, and I love that. Yeah. And then sometimes, as, as you know, I think you're happy you found in the middle of <laughs> yeah. it, where he's preaching a message, but yeah. he's going, man, this is heavy, and I'm not sure where we're going from here, and Absolutely. that building the plane in the air also then has that, can have that point of where you go, man, this is bigger than we thought. Yes. Yes. It sounds like you guys oh gosh, yes. found that. Oh gosh, yes. And then your survey mm -hmm. even pointed out even how great the need yeah. the needs really yeah. were. But it's how huge. beautiful that there were families and family members who just stepped up 
yeah. immediately yeah. and offered what they knew, mm -hmm. the resources mm -hmm. that they had. So, so you started. It sounds like you started with a sermon series. Yes, you started with a sermon series. Your mental illness ministry with a sermon series, pretty much, and then and then a survey. Yeah, and and then when the sermon series is. Over. over what do you do next yeah, right? what happened then? so then we actually launched the ministry okay. in may the first sunday in may perfect because it was mental health awareness yes. Month. Mm -hmm. um and that just kind of lined up perfectly you know yeah. and so um and again from the pulpit we my volunteers i did my woman well, not me but uh, my husband during his sermon series was asking for volunteers yes. because we're getting ready to we're getting ready to but we need right. our volunteers and so the ministry is ran strictly on volunteers I'm a volunteer and so I, I appreciate our volunteers you know giving their time um, in this way because sure. it's 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 a heavy thing to deal with the lives so, of other people. So what people. have you what did you decide after the sermon which the sermon series is gigantic yes. and if if um, more pastors would just even start there, there. because of the, the stick did you feel like you saw a reduction in stigma did yeah. you see that people felt I mean not necessarily because that's a hard one to tackle yeah, I just wondered absolutely. If, you, if you did yeah see. It, it, it became a safe place for people to talk about it versus where we used to be, it was, you know, shun, it looked over, shunned over, yeah. glossed over. We're not talking about that, especially yeah. in our culture. Right. You know, I wanted to ask yeah, you both, yeah. both um, from a cultural point of view, absolutely, um, with stigma, but then also on access to care yes. and any disparities mm -hmm. that you guys have run into yeah. or things that have been challenging. Yeah. In that way. So, yeah, talk about that. Talk yeah. about, you know, in the, in the black community and the yeah. American church. Um, it's it's just one of those things. We, we, you know, it goes way, way back. What happens at home stays at home. You know, it's not something that's talked about. Okay. Um, the issues, the struggles that the family goes through, it's not something that's talked about. And we've, we've somehow carried that from generation to generation. Not saying that it's a healthy thing, because it's not. Right. But um, it's what is. But it is what is, yeah. you know. That's what we know. That's right. what we're used to um, doing. Right. Used to doing. And so, uh, just... Breaking that cycle, yeah. you know, and and it's okay not to be okay. So the sermon series, I mean, because um, in in just in faith communities, mm -hmm. whoever the leader, if it's a pastor, mm -hmm. if it's a rabbi, whoever is the leader, mm -hmm. has such a position of authority and respect. And if that person says, "Hey, you're okay," yes. you know, you you're okay mm -hmm. in the in the in the in the church. So for um, your husband yes. to be the one to stand up there and say. Um, hey, you're okay. Yes. You know, if you're living with a mental illness, mm -hmm. you don't need. I mean, I'm assuming I haven't heard his messages, but just yeah. from what I know, yeah. I'm sure that part of that was there's no need for shame. At you don't all. need to be embarrassed. This Absolutely. is, the, you know, your your. This is it, uh, a mental illness is an illness. Yep. So how was that message received when he, the pastor, mm -hmm. you know, was telling the congregation who might be very used to keeping that mm -hmm. secret mm -hmm. that had to be. Um, that had to just bust some things absolutely loose. absolutely yeah. and I think the thank you for asking that I think the the hugest impact that he had was exposing himself mm -hmm. and saying in my studying this mm -hmm. throughout the series I've Learned. seen a little bit yeah. about you know where I struggle wow. myself and to be able to as a pillar in our community yeah. in the black community yeah. to be able to say that over the pulpit to the congregation was huge Staggering. it's huge yeah. you yeah. know and so it just it just opened the door for other people to say you know what me too and 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 it's okay you know I'm I'm not an expert right. you know I don't have right. all the answers right. but what I do know is that uh, God will make a way you well, know. and it starts to create a new culture. Yeah. You know, Any time that stigma is reduced, if somebody hears it's there's no need to be ashamed. Mm -hmm. you know, there's this is an illness, mm -hmm. and, and there's no reason to be ashamed. It just a pebble at a time feels like it starts to create, Absolutely. so that the people following behind us, the next generation, Absolutely. hopefully don't have to live in that same place of, of shame based, you know, around mental illness. I yeah. mean, I've seen that here at Saddleback mm -hmm. and um, and I love it when other congregations can report that mm -hmm. that same thing. Yeah. So you have the sermon series, you did the survey, figured out some of the needs yes. in your congregation, you launched in May. Launched in and May. what did you actually launch with? So what was yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we launched with what we call our mental health grace groups. 
um, and we use the Grace Grace Alliance mm -hmm. curriculum. The Mental Health Grace the Alliance. Mental, mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And somebody can find that. Yes, we'll put up where they can. Yes, find access absolutely. to those. Yeah, and um, so we have our uh, Living Grace group. Yes those that are living with a mental illness that's the support group for them okay. and then family grace groups is for those who are supporting those who are living with mental illness and we have a support group for them and you know we I, I'm, I'm a believer in not reinventing the wheel sure. if something's working sure. you just tailor it right. to, to your right. your audience right. and so versus waiting a whole 16 weeks because yes. it's a 16 week process yeah. waiting a whole 16 weeks to start another group yeah. I stagger started okay. so I, I started you know when we launched and then I started a whole nother group on a whole nother day of the week, okay. two weeks later. Wow. And so that way you don't have to feel like, you know, if somebody's hurt, if I'm hurting, right. I don't want to wait. Oh, 16 weeks is it's, a lifetime. Yeah, it's a long it's a time. Lifetime you, to, to a week is really a long time if I'm struggling and I'm really hurting So how hurting many groups do you have? Do they run just kind of like when one ends or the 16th, do they start back over? Is there a break between them or how, how So we're still that? filling that out. Okay. We're like, a, you know, we're yeah. crawling, walking. Yes. So still trying to figure that out, but um, started the first the first session is what I call it, and that was you know two separate groups, and then the second session started two weeks later, and on a whole nother. So you get to pick and choose what day works okay. best for you. Um, just trying to fill it out a little bit yeah. and see what best works for our community yeah. for our church. And you do know, you find people from, from the there. community actually attending, or is it pretty much have you limited it at this point? Inside to, for now, okay. yeah. Inside okay. for now, totally open to it because right. we're we're posted on their website, so yeah. we are public. Um, but but, but the responses are the yeah from inside the congregation, yeah. yeah. So what has surprised you? Yeah. Um, the response. I right. guess I can say you know I didn't know what the response was going to be and. I'm, I'm, I was when I started seeing the registrations come in I'm like wow I didn't know that about that family yes. you know and so to see um, people who I've known almost all my life um, reach out and be receptive to that help but exposing themselves as yeah. well was huge yeah. you know and so I can't take that lightly can't yeah. take that for granted because yeah. they're now they're entrusting us with Absolutely. with their stuff yeah. you know and so I think I'm surprised at the response and I told I told our volunteers if we get one registration we're going with that one registration <laughs> we, will have, does not matter. we will have a small group of one <laughs> it, it will be me the leader yes that person, but we're absolutely yeah. but yeah. you know I can't I don't want to wait yeah. until we have until the masses come yeah. it's, it's just unfair so where do you where do you see so what surprised you positively has mm -hmm. been this overwhelming response of yeah, the need. Yeah. Has there been have there been some unexpected either barriers or mm. have you run into anything that it, you weren't maybe anticipating on the has, it, has there been any pushback of people saying, Why are we doing this? You know what? No. Okay. I, I can honestly say at least I haven't heard it. Yeah. Let me <laughs> let me say that. At least I haven't heard it. Okay. And so thank God. Yeah. You know, that, that we haven't had pushback or and you know, well we Nobody don't said the church and, shouldn't be doing this. No. So sh people shouldn't be talking you no. know, taking that internal thought of no, we keep this to right, ourselves. Right. We're not talking about this at church. Yeah, I haven't. Have, I have not heard it. I don't. Well then you guys have taken your, your church has kind of jumped across the Grand Canyon because yeah. you not only jumped against the, I mean, across the, the fact that there's just stigma for anybody, right. you know, talking about minimalists, but then you also talk about the cultural right. um, viewpoint. So, I mean, you you crossed it twice yeah. there. That's, yeah. That is gigantic. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you see, you know, that you've started with the support groups. Mm -hmm. What do you what do you hope for? What do you envision? What's yeah. coming next? Yeah. What's, your, what's your next step? So the next step is our Christian counseling um, component. And um, we're also going to add the Celebrate Recovery component. Okay. Um, we thought we would be able to add that sooner, sooner yeah. than yeah. later. But it is a beast. It, it is a beast. <laughs> um, we actually had, I cannot think of his name right now, but the the one who does Celebrate uh, Recovery Inside. Yes, Danny. 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 There you go. Yes. He came down okay. to visit us and, you know, shared a little yeah. bit. It was, I was like, okay, so we got to put that on pause, yeah. you know, and because <laughs> that, that's something. It's it, a whole other set a of whole volunteers. Nother, it's a whole nother, yeah. yeah. So, um, the but Christian Council. anybody who's piece. listening, yes. maybe who might, I mean, Celebrate Recovery, if you are interested mm -hmm. in starting a Celebrate Recovery, they will help you through it and they will coach you. Absolutely. You know, they give you, their training is, is in this box and yes. you literally can open it. It tells you how many ketchup packets. Yeah. To yeah. serve on your recovery hot dogs. Yeah, it's amazing. Thing. But but it is. Um, some churches may decide to start celebrate recovery first. Mm -hmm. You know, if they don't mm -hmm. have either mental health ministry 
right. or celebrate recovery. Some churches may decide to start celebrate recovery first right. and then add a mental health ministry because yep. the two overlap. They do. And some churches may start with the mental health ministry. So, yeah. um, you know, a, a church can kind of pick there. However, Eventually, I hope you have both. Yes, Because they absolutely. do, they, they are intertwined. Mm -hmm. But I hear you kind of taking it a step at a time. Step, a step at a time, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but our Christian counseling piece will come Yeah, tell me about next. that. Yeah, that? so um, just... Even from, you know, the mental health, um, sometimes a group setting is not enough. And sure. they need one-on-one, -on -one individualized, yeah. the ear, yes. you know. A listening and, ear. Yeah, just a listening ear. And so um, we, I, I am doing Christian counseling right now okay. because I can take them into a room and yeah. we are okay. But to have more counselors on board, yes. we're going to create the space for okay. that. And so, so you're, are you talking about professionals at that point, or are you talking about training volunteers? Training volunteers. Training volunteers. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, training volunteers. And our where the professionals come in is when we outsource. If okay. we need to refer them, you know, for further sure. for further um, treatment or something like that, we did will. Did you already have a, a network by any chance? With you know, were you already connected with some Christian counselors? You know, that you referred people to, or did that come about as you started? Yeah. The kind of came about County yeah kind of came history. about okay. yeah and we do have I actually have professionals as volunteers but I told them you know you got you had to pick and choose right which right. which side you want to work right. on because it can get sticky you absolutely. don't want for them exactly. especially with their license exactly. and the all that, and all that absolutely yeah. and so legal, mm -hmm. yeah. and they totally understand it and they're working in the volunteer Just space the volunteer. oh my gosh yeah. yes yeah. and I, I absolutely love and appreciate them for that because sometimes it's hard as professionals not to you know kick Put on, on that, that that hat, that hat yeah, absolutely, exactly. and so they're 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 amazing, yeah. and they're doing so. It. So you have got the support group, got the support and groups. both for people living with mental illness mm -hmm. and family members. Yep. You're getting ready to expand and add, yep. you know, some training for Christian counselors. Yes. You have got celebrate recovery mm -hmm. the, on the horizon. Yeah, uh, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, it is. Um, do it you is. do you see? I mean, do you feel like when those things happen that like this is this is a good, full, robust? mental health ministry yeah. do you see even more things or you're going to get to that place and then yeah see from there see from there yeah, yeah. kind of see from there pastor has a vision yeah. you know for the church not just being in the community but yes. the church of the community yeah. and that means a lot you know that yes. means providing a lot and right. so this is just adding to that you know mm -hmm. that that you know that check off um but yeah so yeah. when we well so you know um just kind of as we I think I had mentioned a few minutes ago um, if you had noticed any um, well there you know there are disparities mm -hmm. with people of color accessing mm -hmm. mental health services mm -hmm. and health care in general yeah. have you run into that specifically have you heard people tell stories of any place they've they've run into something yeah. that I, and I think it's just the the information the resources are there it's just having the courage to go and, and seek it out you know, and so access to care has not been something in your community that no has been a barrier. No, a hasn't been. No, just yeah. you know, letting that guard down, yeah. being vulnerable enough yeah. to say, okay, listen, I need help. I need help. Yeah. yeah, you know, um, I my mom used to call me tight lip because <laughs> I didn't used to like to talk about my stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and even even going through this whole process of developing the ministry, anxiety. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. has been huge for me. I didn't know what it was before. Huh. Thank God it hasn't been to the point where I needed medication yeah. and you know yeah. all, not even diagnosed right but you're just aware, just aware of, of it, it like absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. dealt with depression yeah. you know um but i think it's just a matter of saying okay i'm not okay it's okay that i'm not okay and so i need to go and get help yeah. because i'm not okay i love that that's the only thing the it only is. barrier yeah so kind of as back. we you know wrap this up um two things yes. one is there you know a story of any particular without naming names mm -hmm. and you know you can disguise it however you want yeah. to but I mean is there like somebody that comes to your mind that you think man what what has happened mm -hmm. in their family or to this individual because of this ministry mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anybody you could specifically pinpoint and just think man that story was this is kind of why we yeah. do what we do mm -hmm. you can come back to that one if you want to okay. um, and then maybe what word would you give to another church that's considering mm -hmm. you know starting mm -hmm. is in the place that you were mm -hmm. you know a year and a half ago yeah. two years of um, 
should we do this? Yeah. Should we not do this? Yeah. What, what would you say? Well, let's start there. Okay. Um, and I think that if, if you are considering, um, I would say do it. Yeah. Um, reach out. Reach out to other churches that are doing it, that have done it. Um, don't be afraid to, to go with the wheel that's already created. Um, you know, ask questions, yeah. you know, um, step outside of the box you know um, and just just do it it's it's definitely necessary it's definitely needed and um, the church is should be the first place Absolutely. should be the first place well I so. thank you so much yeah. for just the, the courage that Absolutely. you and Pastor Terry have yeah. had in, in tackling an area that you weren't sure that you really knew what you were yeah. doing but you yeah. saw a need yes. and you responded and you said yes yeah. and as you you know, if you, as you just said, it's like you stepped out. Yeah. And um, and I, you know, I, I thank you as yeah. as a mom who had a son with severe mental illness mm -hmm. and know how valuable it is to have a, a safe place Absolutely. where you can talk about that pain and that, that sadness yeah. and, and that people in your community and your church know where they can go Absolutely. to get help, yeah. that your church is a safe place. So thank you so much. Thank you. We love you guys. Love you and too. it's so good to be with you. Oh, and awesome. Mwah. This is been great.